Oh. Welcome back, everybody, to Film Buzz, the show where we talk about what's buzzing in film today. I'm in a feminine environment today. New set. It's my house. I live with uh, several women. <laughs> we had a great engagement from the last episode. Uh, a lot of you guys loved the this, this show, gave me great comments. We also got some not great comments. You know, naturally, there's a yin and a yang to everything. I have some comments printed out here. Alex Ostrega said, Love the banter in the opening segment between you and your co-host, Holly March. You guys have great chemistry. Can't wait to watch more. Thank you, Alex Ostrega. Jimmy Darling said, This was historical. Laughed myself to piss while I was in bed. Uh, but, uh, uh, he says, uh, <laughs> can't wait to watch another episode. Uh, uh, Charlie, I don't have a last name here. Charlie said that, uh, I really hope... We have a great show! Gotcha. You're a character. But well, you're gonna work with me to some extent. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Alright. Ready? Uh huh. Give us an action. Three, two, action. Not on camera. Holly March. Z Colbert. You've gotten a lot of criticism for your flatulation. I mean, your, uh, sorry, I keep messing this up. Gesticulation. Oh, I did, did I? Yeah, you move around like a motherfucking. I don't even know what to make the metaphor of. Meth addict. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, very apt. Yes. Um, and I asked you to dress up. You put on some fucking shitty tie and your normal shitty clothes, and you come in here like like a fucking bum. You got a you got glasses on. Like you you got fucking stoned last night. You were out in the fucking casino. What were you doing last night? <clears throat> well, Zeke, look, I had a hard night. My mother just passed. All right, I'm wearing glasses so they can't see the tears coming out of my eyes. You see how bloodshot my eyes are? And sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes I do meth, okay? But listen, I, I did put on a tie for you. I'll take the glasses off for you. You know what I mean? I'm here to help you with your podcast, right? right? Um, can I give you a blazer? I did give you a blazer and you hit it. Where the fuck is my blazer? I have a tie, all right? I like the noose to be a little loose and no blazer anywhere on me. Please. Blazer and shit. Listen, you're back. I love this already. I'm already more attracted to you by uh, every, every, every minute that goes by, I'm more attracted to you. I like it. Y mira, ya sé que tú quieres mi pinga. Ya sé que te quieres que, que te singe en el culito, porque te gusta mucho. Mi pinga es bien grande y ya sé que, que lo vas a, a querer, vas a querer mi, mi pinga. Is it remote? Que es caliente también. I sit on the... Do you know a cock doesn't actually really get hot? It, it seems hot to us, but not to the person touching it. It's cold. A vagina is actually what gets hot. Were you speaking a different language? No. Uh, we have to be funnier. Oh. No, we do. Do we have to? We really do. Wait, are you being genuine? Yeah. That's well, not, I don't, I don't do that. Can you believe that Francesca Schwer was coming on our podcast? I can't believe it. I am so excited about this. Francesca <laughs> is one of my favorite actresses I've ever seen. One time I saw a performance, made me cry out of every orifice I had. Absolutely phenomenal. She's just amazing. Like the reason I do meth is because I watched her and I never felt so high. Never felt so high since. Except meth. Meth, I get a little, <laughs> a little close to that. But not nearly as much. So Francesco beats meth. Oh, 100%. You heard it from our, our, our co-host here, Holly March. Francesca Schwer beats meth. Well, stick with us. So let's give it up for Francesca Schwer. <laughs> the best opening year of an actor that I think any of us know. 
impossibly well, I feel. How many projects did you book in eight or nine? Yeah, nine, I think. Crazy. Wow, that's almost ten. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you were on an HBO show, you were on Pam and Tommy, you were on some horror movies that we're still waiting for them to come out. Mm -hmm. One thing I've always admired about you, and like, uh, I remember we went to the beach one time with Grace, and you were reading that book, uh, An Actor Prepares. Okay, yeah. One of the hardest books it's to read. It's so hard, I didn't get through it. <laughs> <laughs> not a good book, I feel. But uh, you're always, all right, if you're not working, right? If you're not working as an actor, mm -hmm. you're either reading something to do with acting, some book, some book about some training, dogmatic training or something. Uh, yeah. uh, I've also seen your sides when you get sides for an audition. The back page is full of handwritten notes about your character. Um, so you were really busy last year. This year kind of started off a little slow. I think pilot season was pushed back. First thing you did was you signed up for an acting class, and now you go to acting classes all the time. And you don't even like to spend your free time doing something that isn't related to show business in some kind of way. Uh, you were playing a video game on Nick's iPad on your free time, right? We all have free time. Yeah. And you said, uh, I feel bad playing this video game. I should be watching a show so I could at least I'm learning more about Hollywood, right? Yeah, at least I can, you know, quiet the demons inside my head, right? right That's right. what it's more so about. So, uh, here's the question. Um, what drives you to always be in acting to some degree? Um, I don't know what else I'm good at. Interesting. You know what I mean? Maybe I haven't tried also. But like, I feel like you guys are always like writing, or, or you, this is a podcast. We have many interests, yeah, yeah. too many interests. And I maybe. and I have other interests, and I should probably like start dancing again and stuff like that. And I tried to, I did that for a little bit. I loved it. And How I long did you dance? Again. I danced for like ten years before. What, what style? Like everything basically, wow. except for tap. I hated tap. I don't know why. Interesting. One of the hardest things to be good at, I feel. Taps, taps, or just dancing in general, or physics. Uh, yeah, I, I was so, yeah, so I should probably do stuff like that, but I also, yeah, it's the thing is, is like, I don't know what else I've got going. <laughs> do you have hobbies? Do you have hobbies? Because Kevin Wetmore, a yeah. professor at LMU, told me that you have to have something no, not acting you related. No, everybody you need to have, like, hobbies yeah. and shit, and I don't have any. Like, I, I don't, so I think it's that's true. probably it's true. part of why I put all my time into One it. One thing I've noticed like, about you is that, yeah, everybody has several thing. interests, but you are, like, locked into being an actor. The only thing you really want to be is an actor. Yeah, and I, I think, don't see you uh, yeah. with much. Like, I don't feel like you're interested in directing or writing or anything. You're just kind of like locked in as an actor, which uh, I think I would like all that stuff. I just don't put enough energy towards it because I don't want it as bad. Maybe, right, or maybe right. I don't even know that I want it. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't thought Explored about it, it yeah. enough to even know if I want to do that, which is silly. But. Like, I think you should get back into dancing. Just for fun. Just for you. Yeah, no, Like, if I you should. really enjoy it. I do, I do. I Don't do. you go every now and then? I go every now and then, but I haven't in, like, months. It's, like, $20 a class, and, like, that's mm. it. Like, I... It's so silly. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, like, part of it is, like, the, a lack of... Uh, um, or yeah, fear of, 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 or at least like I've gotten like some positive feedback, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> like the yeah. acting thing, right? Right. Of like people have, have said like, you get whatever, I've gotten a job. And so the I work feel, shows. So I feel like, okay, this is the thing that I do. Right, you know, right, I, right. Do you enjoy yourself on set? So since you've done, oh up, God, yeah. right, right. It makes, and you love it. And when you're doing it, it's you're in favorite. it. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the best feeling in the entire world, I wish I could be there all of the time. Yeah. I feel like, you know, what it's like, it's the easiest place to be present. Mm -hmm. I find in myself, and it's like the hardest thing to do is to like actually like be living constantly, like through like even right now, like maybe I'm thinking about something else or before or later, or I'm thinking about what you're not perceiving. present. Or yeah, something. I'm just not actually like here. Right, mm -hmm. but. I feel like there, you're always there because it's like it's like being on a roller coaster or something, you know, where it's just like you, you're having so much fun and it's like, mm -hmm. and there's no, it almost feels like there's no pressure anymore because like, because you got the job, you feel like, okay, I, I can, you know, it's just playtime. You don't have the pressure once you've got it and once you're That's there because they I know mean, they want you, you're there, you have it. You can be confident. 
Yeah. Right, which sometimes I think is a bad thing. Like to a certain degree is like sometimes I feel like I do work so hard on auditions and stuff and then I don't feel like I necessarily work as hard on set on set really because oh well, I try to but you know there's less time and and all these things that I've booked or yeah you, you said know, one on thing this, you get like you get like three days notice tops you know mm-hmm. to like to be on set and to do it or like like that lifetime movie I did it was like we're doing like 16 pages a what was day. it called what was this lifetime movie called Plug they it? haven't decided. Oh, oh, you can't plug it then. Okay. Well, it's out, but it like on Lifetime it's called No, I'm swear to God. <laughs> on Lifetime it's called Cheating for Your Life. On Hulu it's called Dangerous Cheaters. Okay. Well, and then on either IMDb, of those. it's called Dangerous Cheaters, but the poster that they have with it says Cheating for Your Life. <laughs> 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 you can't make that up. It's just true. But um Yeah, like we're doing sixteen pages a day or eighteen pages a day and like 12, like 12 hour days so I'm just sleeping in between driving to Santa Clarita and I had three days before that to start so I'm just like learning you know what I mean like you can't well, do can... work on that you know what I mean right, so right, then it right, feels right. like a lot so that is I'll be fair to myself in that way but a lot of times I feel like I do less work once I have the job right mm-hmm. yeah you said that once you were on a show and you were better. like you were, I was like, oh, can I watch the show? And you are like, you were like, I don't know if I'm the best in the show. And I'm like, well, you're on the show. I want to watch it. And you were like, you should watch uh, my uh, my auditions. For the <laughs> you said the auditions were much better acting. Yeah, that's how I feel all the time. But yeah. I also like, I'm 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 completely terrified to watch myself in general. Oh, you I, like, are. I'm not, I'm fine with the auditions because I know that just me and a few people are gonna see it, and mm-hmm. people that obviously like me, so like my agents and managers, right? Like they. Right, right, right. So, like, I feel like it's fine then. But, yeah, I have, like, a weird, uh, like, wall about, like, asking people to watch me and something. I don't know why that's... Like, on on television? Oh, it sounds like the... Like, it makes my skin crawl. It makes Mm. me sweat. Like, Uh I don't... I don't know what that is Do you feel that way about everybody? Like, Like your family and friends, anybody? Yes, like, I feel, like, super uncomfortable, like, the attention of it all. Like, I don't know. Like, I hate it. Like, I don't know. Again, another thing we don't have. No, I have that. I mean, yeah. That maybe we could benefit from. No, but I I don't know, man. I feel like it's, like, it's... Well, I was talking to Blake about this, like, our friend Blake. It it was, like, it's almost, like, everything's too personal right now. Because Mm. we're all just starting in the industry, like... The, a loss feels like a loss feels so huge or somebody not liking your work especially it so. feels like it feels like the only opinion right right so like it's like when and, and yes I, I did a few things but like still it's like it's not that much stuff in comparison to like when you're judging a different actor you know what I mean yeah it has been like a lot for, yeah of course of course which is, is fair but it's like everything is so personal to you because it's the only work you have to show. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, and yeah, there's auditions where just like, the writing's better. Like, you know what I mean? Right, like, there's, right. some, of these, there's some of these shows and movies are fucking amazing. Right. And it's like, and you don't really have a chance for them because they're all offered out, right? Like, these like, leading roles. And, of course. Like, yeah, so those, those auditions I always think are better because I work so hard because I want something like that, of course, because all the reasons. And, <laughs> But yeah, and the writing the writing does half the work for you, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if that feeling of of uh, a bad opinion tearing us up uh, will ever go away. No. Like no matter how good we're doing. Go ahead. <laughs> miserable and I will say that most actors are completely depressed most of the time artists in general yeah because like because everyone's telling you no and that you're not allowed to work and then you do work and it's on something that like you like is 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 like it's like an addiction I was just listening to a podcast that said this it's like the highs are high and the lows are low yeah I went to the fucking Royal Shakespeare Company over there they're telling me I have no time left uh, over there in England, right? And it was like supposed to be all these like great actors and everything, and they were good. <laughs> but uh, that uh, we we were talking with one of them at a bar after, and um, and the guy said acting. He he was playing like the part of Brutus and Ro- and Julius Caesar, like one of the coolest parts right. of all time. And he was like, he was this handsome guy. He was like waiting. For, he was just waiting at a table by himself for like someone to come and and sit with him. I think so that he could like have sex with them or something. Like. <laughs> Because everybody right. just wanted to talk to this handsome, talented guy. And, and I came. 
much to his uh, disappointment. Yeah. And he and he said I was acting. He said acting is the best job in the world and the worst job. When you book a part, a good one, it's the best job in the world. Obviously, the best job in the world. No other job could even come close to no, being as good as this job, job is. World, yeah. But when you don't book a part, it's the worst job in the world. <laughs> Obviously, the worst job in the world. No <laughs> job could be as bad as this one. Right, it's true. So, yeah. Also, I do think that like everybody that tries to be an actor, you you have to think you're a little bit special, right? Oh, yeah, to yeah. even like try to do this stupid, crazy thing, right. like and be stubborn too. Yeah, and be a little stubborn to like continue to do it despite. 90% of, you know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, I booked a lot of stuff my first year. I probably had like 120 auditions. Good Lord. Twice what I got. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, so it's like, so yeah. So it's like, yeah, I booked a lot of stuff and that was really cool. And, and but the like percentage is. But like, it's like, think about the percentage. Sub 10%. And like a lot of those things that like I would get so close to that were like really big, like juicy, really cool things. Like they just like. It's like you, it, like they give you stuff too. You know what I mean? They give you like compliments and like all this stuff, and you get so close to something that can change your life, and then they're like, actually no. Like, <laughs> oh uh, boy. You know, you don't look like this other much. Yeah. So how'd that feel? The thing we talked about before the cameras were on. <laughs> um. Yeah. So basically. He asked her. No, it's, she'll answer the question. They'll know what I asked her. God damn it, Zeke. Go. Uh, um, <laughs> so I get very close to people on set when I'm on set, but the, the reason the reason why was what I was saying is that like you're all a lot of times in a city that you've never been before with people that you've never met, and like you're all like alone, <laughs> and and most and like when you're not on set or you're not working, which ninety percent, you're even when you're on set, you're waiting around most of the time, right? So it's like. You have to get like super close to these people, yeah. and they get super close to you, and you just like latch onto each other, and it's honestly really depressing because you get so and close. It ends. You, yeah, and then it ends. <laughs> and, and then, you never really and, see then them and then someone lives in New York, and someone yeah, lives in Canada, yeah, 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 and, yeah. and you just never see them ever, and you barely talk to them <laughs> because you're antisocial over like you're with your phone, or right? Or you're bad at keeping up with you're people. You're bad at keeping up with people, as we but, all like, are. Yeah, but like, yeah, you become just like. You just fall in love with everyone. Do you have you know an anecdote mean? of like someone you met on one of these shoots that's a fun anecdote or something you guys got into? Uh, you have nine shoots to pick from, so you better have a story. Uh, I got haunted. <laughs> well, there we go. All right. You got <laughs> I haunted. I talk to her about this all the time because I'm scared it's of ghosts as so well. It's so fucked up. So like I was shooting a horror movie in Louisiana and like there was, so there was, so first of all, first day on set with the producers, they find a dead body in like one of the rooms Sick. that we're supposed to shoot in that I ended up shooting in on Halloween, which was the full moon. And I was like tied up on in the Louisiana, with, like, like a satanic, like yeah, chalkboard yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. And there's just like over the radio, there was like all of a sudden it would like spur out and like say people's name that was on the set. And then it turned out that the person's <laughs> name that they were saying, this ghost, uh, was like our crafty girl, right, Terry? And so like, and then all of a sudden, like we're coming up from the boiler room, like it's underneath the basement of this like. Anything building. with a fucking boiler room is yeah, haunted. Yeah, like in the eighteen hundreds, and like we're coming up from the basement, and like, oh, we just like the, the the elevator doors open, and Terry is running across the hall, screaming her. She's head probably off. terrified. <laughs> Yes. You cut me off to make that fucking pun? <laughs> I didn't cut, no, I didn't, I was listening. I cut you off to listen. I should have cut like, you off. Was, Go get me The dead off. body that we found was her friend. Like, <gasps> she knew her. And, like, the lights had been flickering. Like, there was a time where I was, like, like we were waiting, like, me and Victoria, Vikash, like, uh, the person, like, she was, like, my best friend in the movie. Like, I, like, the PA had come in to get, to, like, check on her. They're, like, oh, we're still shooting, da, da, da. Like, how are you doing? She's, like, they're, like, she was, like, she still, they haven't called Francesca yet. No, like Francesca's been down there for two hours, and she's like, no, she fucking hasn't, because she was hearing my music play on my phone, and like my pages flipping, and like my writing, and sh it's just was crazy. We and then in my hotel room, I had a different ghost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like less interesting of a ghost. Well, that ghost was actually ghost. like fucking. I saw him. I so you for yeah, a long this, time. that one really. I had to move rooms because they they kept me up all night. I was screaming and crying. I've never felt terror. Which made me just feel like a bad actor. Because I was not that scared. I was not that good at pretending to be scared when I wasn't seeing an actual ghost in front of me. Yeah. Wow. Uh, this is way more interesting than the next segment, I feel. Well, if you're going <laughs> to set it up like that, the, I For mean... the sake of the, of the form of the show. <laughs> do you, do you want to just do uh, all no, interview? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, stick with us. We're doing... Francesca's reading jokes by Holly and I. We're all reading jokes, We're all right? reading 
jokes. Stick with us. On a wheel. All right. Uh, Francesca. <laughs> Will you spin this wheel and, and pick a fucking uh, joke? Sure. Oh, I didn't do a very good kind of That's fine. Again. What's it on? Okay. Zeke. All right, Zeke. Okay, okay. He's gonna give you a joke to read. Okay. I wrote I wrote these in a fucking flurry uh, yesterday, so hopefully, this is the one that I really want to hear you say. Okay. Where is it? God damn right. it! No, 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 no. We're going. We're going with this one. I need her to. I need her to read this joke. <laughs> I need you. This one. This one. All right. Look. Okay. 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 Gotcha. First time she's reading the joke out loud. Okay. When, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, when Robert Pattinson first put on the new Batman suit, after pulling the ears over his head, he looked up, took a, a cloud, a deep breath. And, Let me start over. Yes. <laughs> when Robert Pattinson first put on the new Batman suit, after pulling his, the ears over his head, he looked up, took a deep breath, and said, Finally, a serious role. <laughs> I got there eventually. Finally a serious role. <laughs> he finally got away from that vampire shit. Alright, whatever. <laughs> um, what about Lighthouse? I know, and the good time. It's, I, I love Robert Pattinson, but I have to make a joke about him. I don't know. I was just listening to Robert Pattinson interview, and he was saying that like his Twilight audition, like he did one go, he was freaking out. His agent gave him a Valium right before it, and that's why he acted all spacey, and apparently they liked it, and that's how he got the role. Wow! <laughs> that's super interesting! <laughs> Rockstar stuff, dude. Rockstar stuff. So, you know, there's not really... Alright, do you want her to spin again, or do you want... Spin again, go! That was better. Holly. Nice. (laughs) Zeke here thinks Jane Campion is a genius. Oh, man. Personally, I think you people like Gene Wilder or Gene Hackman are... I think... I think people... (laughs) Personally, I think people like Gene Wilder and Gene Hackman are geniuses. Jane Campion... Is more of a genius. Probably one of the worst jokes ever written. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Thank you. You did a great job. I love that delivery. Spin again until you have to be late for work. (laughs) The genius one. Holly. Oh, shit. I don't know what this one is, but it's... Here you go. I saw that movie, The Worst Person in the World... A beautiful Norwegian movie about a young woman's journey of self-discovery. You know, there's a movie about Hitler called The Greatest Story Ever Told. Never Told. Odd. That's interesting. The worst person in the world Wait, compared what to the, the greatest the story. Oh, What's I get it. I get it. So the, the, the titles about, are... The titles are opposite. That oh, that wasn't the part of the I've joke? Ever seen. It's what? That was part of the joke. I just delivered it differently. Here, do this one. Sorry. Okay. This is eight. It's gonna, there's going to be a lot of editing in this section. <laughs> We've all participated in a little cow tipping in our youth. Just some harmless fun. But I most implore you not to try bull spinning. You don't want to get that mad cow dizzies. Oh, bro. Uh, (laughs) This is just killing me. All right, all right. Wait, uh, Francesca, can you spin? Can I just give her a joke? Give her a joke. (laughs) I'll spin it for the end. Oh, it did? Uh, cool. Uh, uh, Alright, here, read this one out loud. Really enunciate this one. Ready? Why is it people who like dogs more than humans always need therapy? <laughs> that one's more of a common thing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, 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 here, this is the last one for Francesca to read. I don't think. Uh, flat earther Ron Michaels has taken the hot air ballooning around the has taken to hot air ballooning around the world. Check out his new book, Across the World in Eighty Days. Across, not around. Uh, Across. Not I got too rock. smart with that one. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> did you? Did you get too smart? I got too stupid with that one. Hey, one more. All What's right, it? who? What does this land on? Oh, oh. You're gonna read one of mine. Okay. An Australian man who was flanked by a velociraptor and killed by it, noticed it had exceptional eyelashes and fox nails. Faux. Oh, you ruined the joke. 
No, I didn't. The joke is coming We're up. The, the punch. You need the setup to without being interrupted. Okay, again. An Australian man who was. No, don't. An Australian man. An Austra- Australian. <laughs> it says Australian. And that's the joke. <laughs> an Australian man who was flanked by a velociraptor and killed by it noticed it had exceptional eyelashes and faux nails. His last words: "Cover girl." I think Holly that- March, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Though, right? Wait, you're spinning again? I want. Oh, all right. oh you, you spin. You Holly. spin. You and Holly. It's all right. All right, can I give you this joke? Yeah, no, I don't know. Let's see what it lands it landed on. Landed on Holly. Can I give you? It this landed joke? on Holly, yes. but he's funny. Right. What's it on now? Z. Holly again. It's Holly on Holly. Yes. Yes. It's on Holly. Yes. You guys. Oh yeah, it's on Holly. Oh, it's on Z. Fuck off! Oh, China has been test. <laughs> China has been test firing missiles near Japan's borders. China says it's international waters, so it's their right. But listen. If I'm peeing in the urinal next to you and I start drifting over closer and closer, maybe even onto the wall, you're gonna get nervous too, right? I would. Oh, yeah. Alright, uh <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gotta spin the thing. Can I just, can we say our own jokes? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted the whole time! You got it. You All right, here we go. Ready? Uh, I don't know. Uh, this one's a stretch. Uh, when, please be calm. <laughs> when Elon Musk was asked whether he wanted his child named XAAA-12 to be a boy or a girl, he said, neither. I always wanted to give birth to an airplane. Good. Francesca, he named his, Francesca, he named his Francesca. kid after an airplane. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Elon Musk, billionaire and tech giant, doesn't do normal yoga or regular stretching. He has a new method called elongating. You really like puns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you want to read my last one? Yes, I do. Please. All right, yes. yeah, okay, please give me, do give me the direction. Give it to me. Give it to me. What All do right. you want? Okay. <clears throat> it's important to you. Brad Anderson's famous new gag art exhibit. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Brad Anderson's famous new gay art exhibit called Parachise. Well, that's why you don't write it on the fucking paradise. Yes. Start again. Brad Anderson's famous new gay art exhibit called Paradise met mixed reviews this Sunday. The NY Times called a beautiful display of what it means to be gay. The Wall Street Journal called just some guy sucking cock in public. (laughs) New York Times. Well, then write it out! I thought you would be able to... Don't think. It was still good. Thank you, thank you. All right, you 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 want to finish this off? No, I want you... Ew. (laughs) <laughs> you you loved, saw too much I of that loved, art exhibit, yeah, did you? you really Here, what's loved, this one? All right, you want me to read this? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Correlation does not imply causation, but I've noticed with more Zoom meetings, more Winnie the Pooh fashion trends. What? <laughs> no pants, no pants. There you go. So cool. yeah. <laughs> I just they got, got their it. cocks just out. You have enough jokes to keep. I thought going. it was funny because it was just this weird. I started acting at a very early age. My first role was in second grade. I played a young child who didn't just pee himself. I guess we have to say herself. I, at this know, I probably should have changed the gender. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Hold on. So wait, I got another joke. Uh, for you. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> One more. <laughs> better pizza, better ingredients. John's papa. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's just out of order. Anyway. Oh my god. I'm so sorry for this last segment, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we've run out of jokes. <laughs> No, we haven't. We have so much more we can do. But unfortunately, Francesca has to go to work like a normal adult. Yeah. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for being on. Yeah. What a dream. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I wasn't calm. I'm so sorry, Dante. We tried our best. 
All right, uh, Zeke. Yeah. Catch us in a uh, few episodes uh, or the next episode, few weeks. Good night and good luck, everybody.